He says, suppose I tell you there's somebody ten times worse. Somebody that's much worse. I said, somebody worse than him? He says, yes, he's called Hitler. And this is what it's all about. This song is important. And so I said, oh, I understand. Okay, then. So he said, do it. And uh, we, I thought I was never going to go on until the moment came and he come outside and say, this is it. Get the boy, get the boy. So I says, what is this? This is it. Speaking to the pit and says, yes, you've got his music. Yes, he's got it. Where is he coming from? And my dad said, it's from the right hand side of the stage. He says, and what happens? What happens? He says, you put a white spot on, hit him with a white spot. Just when he comes on the stage, he says, whereabouts is he? He said, flood it until, until you can see him and then come in on the boy. And he'll walk down. He said, don't forget, you go, you, the microphone is upstage. You come from downstage, walk right up to the footlights and sing your number. Do it slowly. Take it and start your song when you get to the lights, when you get to the mic. So I said, OK, Dad, OK. And then it all happened. I heard the cue. I heard my music. I entered from upstage down to the footlights. I walked down to the footlights and I started my song, which maybe the words are important. And so even though I can't hit the notes that, the child, that I did as a child, but it was, isn't any faking. My brain is tired and stunned. The truth on me is breaking. I'm branded broken shun this tragic persecution so hard to understand is hell's own institution where it's organized and planned i'm a refugee pursued and forced to flee wondering what the end will be i'm a refugee certain Chin endlessly for someone who'll be kind to me. Outcast am I, no place where I can lie. Is it nothing to you who pass by? Hate and tyranny leave me now just as you see. A broken hearted wrath, you and The lights went black. All the lights out. All the light out. The whole of the lights went on. And the audience then gave me the applause. And I walked off to the side of the stage, to the wings. And the applause carried on. And I got pushed to go back on. I pushed to go back on and I bowed and spoke. I came off again and they went pushed to go back on, but this time I was followed by a tall lady. And this tall lady came forward, leaning on my shoulders at the back of me, said I was to come forward and present the audience with a program signed by all the stars that you're going to see here this evening. And in my profession, I have learned timing is the essence of a good performance. And I do think the timing is ripe now for me to not do this program later on as planned, but to do the program at this moment. And they started the program. Another person came on grabbed hold of me and took me off to the side of the stage. And when they took me off to the side of the stage, they, uh, they then spoke to me and said, you know, it's, it's somebody there at the side wants to see you for, to, to, uh, somebody else for maybe some work. And I said, where's dad? And my dad came along and says, yes, it's, yes, it's all right. Come on, let's go. And there was the door manager and he had somebody there that came out from the audience. And he said that it was a wonderful job for me to do if I would like to listen to it. And he says it was to be in Bertini's band, Blackpool band, Bertini's band. And he says, 
there's a chance that you would be, because they were looking for a boy that could do this. And my dad said, well, you had, they have, I haven't had a meal yet and haven't had anything. The, the theatre was still carrying on behind, all this the different people was, and you could hear going on, but my dad says, I think it's a time for us to go, and I'll take you out for a meal and we'll have a chat. And at the same time, talk to this gentleman. And this gentleman said, uh, the uh, Bertine is looking for a singer. And again, to cut a long story short, we went over a meal, and he made arrangements for me to see Bertini the following day. Bertini, I went on from Bertini's band. I got the job. The job was, uh, wasn't paying a lot. And Bertini said, and I was there when he said to my dad, he was not getting paid anything at all. He's going to have his experience. Anybody would wish to have the experience that he's had. He was going to go into doing the, uh, 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 an experience second to none in the world. And I offered for me to be able to have this experience. My dad said, but what's in it for him? What will he get? He said, well, it's the experience. He said, I'll tell you what. He said, I had, he could see my father wasn't, he did, wasn't too keen. And he said, well, I'll see. I'll pay his expenses. And uh, at the same time, I will give, uh, I, I will give him about X number of pounds. And uh, my dad looked at me and he could see I was very keen. I got the job. Now to go from Bertini, I was at Bertini's band and I had a terrific experience. I had people there being a boy teaching me all the sorts of things in show business, juggling, magic. I had people showing me about marionettes, which I loved and they could see I loved it, and puppets and talking about them and seeking all the various things. But there were people in the show that uh, did things that I used in my puppet world when I started to take up the puppets fully as full employment. But while I was at Bertini's band, I was had another shock was to come to me. But while I was practicing and I forgot to mention to you that I bought a doll, managed to get a doll that was as big as I was from a shop. And I was practicing vent because I had all the people that were lovely, the people in the variety in the show business. They were, telling a, and a, they were telling a child better more than they were telling an adult, telling them all lovely secrets in show business, things you would never, you would never get from show business. One thing I, I learned from, from being there was a guy that was working magic that came, later on in life I used was uh, Pepper's Ghost, which doesn't mean anything to the public, but it was a trick photography and trick way of using a glass to maybe put, make something appear that's not there. And this was wonderful experience. It showed me how to use it and how it was done. And um, so I learned so much from that show. But there was a thing that happened to me, more learning you get in life. One day when I was singing my number, because I, I was working, they have two sections. Bertini's band is in the second half. Variety in the first half. And the variety in the first half, I was used as a duet number uh, in the first half, singing a number in the first half and some popular songs with the band in the second half. But in my main number, I was singing, which was a boy selling newspapers in the street. In the midst of singing one day, I was singing my top notes when all of a sudden I got hoarse and I notes failed to come out. I'd lost my voice. But you know, I think it would have hurt me more than it did if it wasn't for everybody but telling me it's going to happen one day. But it happened. And I lost my voice and again I'll skip through all the formality but they went to the boys being asked after the end of the week when they could see it wasn't clearing and I had really lost my voice, Bertini through an audition and I used it for an excuse to go back to my dressing room for something because I knew it was all taking place only to walk in the backstage door when this doorman was trying to prevent me coming in for a minute for the first time and I said it's alright I'm just going to go to the dressing room and he could see he couldn't stop me and I could hear my number being sung by somebody else on the stage, that I'd lost my job. 
somebody else was singing my songs and I was not no longer going to be in the sorrow he was getting somebody else and so again that moved along I had packed my bags and took my bed doll and all the things that I had, props I had said Bob, goodbye to wonderful people all of them were marvellous I'll never forget that and went from there I went straight into so, being Pardon? You told me you were at 12 when yeah. that happened. Yes. Yeah. Can you just go back a little bit? So when you when you had to leave, I was 12 and had to take all my bags and leave all these wonderful people and then go on. When I was... Can you just say how old you were? So repeat a little bit of what you oh, said. Oh, that already. bit there. Yeah. I remember how old I was. Oh, I, I haven't mentioned my age, but the point is, I think... When I was a ch at that time, I, <coughs> at that time, taking a rough guess at it then, from the time I was at the Prince of Wales Theatre, I was a boy of 12, and the nightclubs was a boy of 12 years of age. Mm -hmm. I went on to be in about, by the time I got to Bertini, I was a boy of about 13 years of age, 13. And uh, I think uh, I carried on anyway with Bertini's band till it parted and went on from Bertini's band coming back to London with my doll and my props. And whilst I was in, while I was in London, uh, my father said, have you, what, what are you going to do now? And I said, well, Dad, I've been practicing with all the impersonations. I don't know what you think of it, but I'm going to do you know how people do impersonations, and I do impersonations of various stars. I'm going to do it through the ventriloquist doll. He says, what ventriloquist doll? And I said, the one that's... Oh, he says, yeah, that, you told me about that doll. Yes, let's see it. So when I went through the act and told him what it is, he said, oh, it's marvellous, it's lovely. He says, why don't we practice something and see if we can do something with it? So I practiced with it, and he... I went on to, uh, to to see Drury Lane Theatre because what had happened I forgot to mention in in the between Bertini and coming back to London war had been declared and so I took the doll to what they called Drury Lane Theatre now Drury Lane Theatre was a place where they were rehearsing people for ENSA now, Ensa was taking all the people from London shows and everybody that was resting, resting, out of work. They call resting for when you're from one job to another. And when you're, rather than say you're out of work, you say you're resting. And we were, they were all, from their days of resting, took on a job entertaining the troops with Ensa. And I, being working in variety and coming straight from the theatre, from the variety theatre, I had my um, uh, variety card. There was a variety card. It's no more now because now it's all been uh, equity. Uh, they, they amalgamated to equity. And uh, I uh, had this, I had this uh, chance to show the, uh, e the equity, what I could do, and I did this number. And uh, they were very happy with it. They thought it was, they thought it was very good. And so I got in a show, working with the doll. So here was a real in introduction to the puppets. I got in the show, working with the puppets, the ventriloquist doll. And I work with a show called Odds, Odds and Ensa. Odds and, it's a play on words. Instead of odds and ends, it was odds and ends. And in it were some very good stars. Today, lots, some of the stars I met in ends was marvellous, more experience. I met stars that everybody knows today that were working in that, entertaining and that. One of the stars I was with there was an understudy as well as my variety act. I was the understudy Tony Simpson, who was also a very well-known actor and opera, uh, working in opera and working in the... Light entertainment and and uh, 
and uh, a, a classical actor too, Shakespeare and one thing and another. And I understudied him in the show. Everybody had to understudy each other in case of illnesses. My person, I.